Hey, it's Ben. Today we're talking bit depth. Bit depth is a setting that's attached to every image you've ever opened in Photoshop. And it has a huge impact on the quality of your picture. So let's take a look. What is it? Well, a bit is the smallest piece of computer memory we can change. And bit depth means how many little bits of memory are we going to use to describe each pixel that makes up our image? Okay. Well, that's going to determine how much we can change a pixel. And let's start with the lowest we could go. Let's say we only used one bit of memory to describe each pixel. Well, a bit can only be on or off. Really, it can be a zero or a one. Can't be anything else. And if that's all the choices you have, then this video wouldn't look like this because this isn't one bit. This is. One bit only can have pure black and pure white. And so this is what it looks like. It's pretty low tech. But if you think about when we first got into graphics, heck, when I first started using computers, we could only use text. And when graphics came along, memory was not cheap. Even to create this video here, this would be way too many pixels. We wouldn't be able to afford a computer with this much memory. So let's dial down the number of pixels that make up this video. So this would be more like it back in 1972 when I played my first video game, which was Pong. And Pong used solid black and solid white because that's all we had. Before that, we just had text. And Pong was somewhat fun to play when you were used to checkers and chess. But then we progressed. And in 1984, the Mac came out. That's when I got my first Mac. And we still only had solid black and solid white, but we had more memory and therefore we could use more pixels. And therefore these pixels would get smaller like this. And back then we had a program called Mac Paint and Mac Paint was the precursor to Photoshop. But all the graphics we made were solid black and solid white because we were so limited in the amount of memory we could use. Well, let's get out of this funky looking video look. What would be a modern use for one bit graphics? It sounds like it belongs back in the 1970s. Well, it largely does, but there are still some modern uses. Let's say you have a label printer on your desk. I got one that uses this little cartridge and this cartridge has just got white tape in it. And if it heats it up, it turns black. It can't make anything else other than white or black. Well, if I want to print my logo or a graphic on this, I need a one bit image. Same with your restaurant receipt printer. And then another instance would be if you're driving down the road and you see a construction sign and all it is is a grid of light bulbs and you got to tell it which one should be on and which one should be off. Well, you need a one bit file to do that. But let's see how can we do that in Photoshop today? Well, here's a picture I took in Lisbon and I think this would look pretty good. Solid black and solid white. I think I could use that on the top of a restaurant receipt. Well, if that's the case, let's get rid of all the shades of gray and colors. To do so, they've got a couple choices. The first is I could choose image, adjustments, and there's a choice called threshold. And threshold is going to make the image solid black and solid white. And then I can move this slider to determine should we get more white or go the other way, should we get more black and somewhere in between. And I can move that around until I think the image looks its best and then click OK. Just because this image now only contains solid black and solid white doesn't mean we're only going to use one bit of memory to store it. In fact, if you look up here at the name of the file and you look over to the right, it says RGB slash 16. This is a 16 bit image. We need to do something more if we really want to save some space when we store this image. So let's do it. Let's go to the image menu. We'll choose mode and right here it says 16 bits per pixel. That's a lot. So let's go down to eight bits first, then let's go right back there. And what we want to end up with is at this thing called bit map. That means just a grid of bits, single bits, ones that can only be solid black and solid white. How do we get there? Cause it's grayed out. Well, if you have a color image, meaning it's in a mode with that uh, color, you need to go to grayscale. It'll ask you to get rid of your colors and then you can come in here to bitmap. And when you do, this comes up. It asks you resolution because it assumes you're going to send this off to a restaurant receipt printer or something similar. And it wants to know how small a dots can that printer make. 
Well, my printer on my desk can do 360 dots per inch. So that's what I type in. Then down here, it assumes you have a normal grayscale photograph. And it wants to know what to do with all the shades of gray that are in your picture. So if you click here, you have some choices. Now we already applied threshold, and that would be like this choice here. 50% threshold means you just leave the slider in the middle. Well, if you have an image that looks more like a photograph than this, which is more like a graphic, then you'd want to use one of these choices to try to simulate shades of gray, even though you're only ending up with solid black and solid white. Let's try it on a different picture. This one is not going to look good with solid black and solid white. You can find out, just come over to threshold and take a look. Doesn't matter where you move this, I'm not necessarily going to be happy with it. So instead, let's convert the image first to grayscale. I suppose I can choose don't show again. And then let's go to bitmap. But this time, let's use diffusion dither. What that's going to do is try to simulate shades of gray, even though we're only using solid black and solid white. Let's see what it looks like. That looks terrible. Well, it only looks terrible because we're zoomed out on the picture. You want to zoom up to at least 100% view. That's the only time when you can see all the pixels that make up your image. And now I can see that the image is made out of solid black and solid white pixels, but it did a pretty good job of trying to make it look as if we still have something that resembles shades of gray. So that's what I'd want to use if I wanted to put my face at the top of a restaurant receipt because it can only print solid black and solid white. Now I realize one bit is not very exciting unless you're in the restaurant receipt printing business. So let's make a progression. Let's start using more bits per pixel. We can go all the way from one bit at the most basic to 32 bit at the ridiculous end. So let's slowly make our way up and see when we'd want to use it and what's it going to do for our image. So each time you add another bit of memory to describe each pixel that makes up your image, you're going to double the number of choices for what that pixel can look like. So instead of only having the possibility of solid black and solid white, you suddenly have four shades of gray. And that looks like this. And so with four shades of gray, well, that could be used back when memory started to get a little bit cheaper than it was when we were using solid black and solid white. And that's when we could have four shades of gray. Back then, I played a game called Sprint or Sprint 2 because it had two steering wheels, but it allowed you to drive around this little track and all you had on the screen were four shades of gray. But heck, that was a lot better than when we only had solid black and solid white. Then somebody figured out how inside the computer, why not define, instead of having four shades of gray, to find some colors to use. And then we started getting more fun arcade games like Space Invaders. And there, instead of having shades of gray, we had colors, and that's due to something called a color table, but I'll describe that in a moment. When color came along, Suddenly we had more interest in games and they started spending more money on memory and suddenly we could have 16 colors. And with 16 colors, that means we're using four bits of color. And that's when I had games like Donkey Kong, Joust, Defender, Frogger, uh, Miss Pac-Man or the normal Pac-Man. And you had the arcade just filled with these games. Well, we could only use 16 colors because memory was still pretty darn expensive. Eventually though, we were able to get cheap enough memory where we could use eight bits. And with eight bits, we had 256 different colors we could use. That's also what we had when the original Macintosh 2 came out, the first kind of color Mac. It featured eight bit graphics, but those eight bits were eight bits of indexed color. Let's figure out what the heck that means. Well, all that means is each possibility with those little bits that can be zero or one were assigned a color. And it was just put in a table and it was stored somewhere. Whenever it encountered all zeros, it made black. All ones, it made white. And some of the different combinations would create other colors based on the color table. So let's get rid of this weird graphics. What do we use this for today? Because I don't want to think about going back to childhood. Well, we still use these concepts in Photoshop today all the time. So let's take a look at how we can go from one bit all the way up to eight bits of what's known as indexed color. Indexed means there's a color table somewhere.
Well, here goes. Let's say I'd like to save this image and display it on the internet. I'd have a couple different choices. Let's explore the one that has to do with bit depth. Uh, to do this, I'm gonna go to the file menu, I'm gonna choose export, and I'm gonna choose save for web. In save for web, there are two file formats that allow us to choose how many bits we're gonna use to store the image. And those two file formats are GIF, and the second one is ping eight. The eight stands for eight bits. So we can choose either one of those. They're gonna offer generally the same options. So right now, we're set up for two colors. That means a total of one bit of memory. Well, anytime you only have one bit of memory, you only have two choices. But in this case, instead of having black and white, we have two colors. That's because, look right here, there's a color table. And that just means it looked at the image to figure out what colors it thought would be best, and it assigned them here. We could actually influence that by playing with this menu, it ends up determining how those colors are chosen. But when you're only working with two colors, I doubt you're gonna see much difference between those. But then you notice how it's simulating shades of gray. Remember that choice called dithering. That's because right here is a choice called dither and we can control how much there is. If we brought down dithering to zero, you'd see it's turned off, but you might wanna put just a little bit in because not everything looks like a photograph. You might just have a logo that has some shading to it and a little bit of dithering might look better than a lot. Uh, or you can come over here and turn it off altogether. I'm gonna turn mine off altogether so we can make it pretty obvious we're only at two colors. Then let's go to the colors menu and click on it. Notice all of the choices in this menu. Each one as you progress your way down in the menu, it doubles the number of colors. Hmm. Well, do you remember that each time you add another bit of memory, you double the number of choices you have. So this is going from one bit to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, to seven, to eight. And so if we choose this, we're gonna use eight times as many bits of memory as if we use this. So as we progress our way up here, the image will start looking better as we get more and more shades, but we'll also be increasing the amount of memory and the amount of hard drive space that this image takes up. And I saved it out using each one of these settings, and here are the different file sizes I ended up with. And it's not gonna perfectly equate to how many bits it is using because there's other information stored in a file, like the date that it's created, what file format it is, that kind of stuff. But in general, you'll see each time I go to more bits, it takes up more space on my hard drive. Now down here is our color table. This shows us all the colors that are being used. And this is 256 colors. If I go to 128, you'll see this is only half full. And if I go to 64, it's gonna get a quarter of the way full. And so on. And therefore it just shows you how many colors you're using. Knowing that the lower the number you choose, the smaller your file size is gonna be. And the higher the number, the larger. And it's a compromise. And most of the time you come in here, and if it's a photograph, I'd set this to diffusion, and I'd usually have that set to 100, and then I'd come in here and say, okay, how much can I get away with? So let's save out this image with 16 colors. There's all 16 of them. I'll hit the save button, and then I'm just gonna reopen this, and I'll speed that up so you don't have to watch. Here is the image opened up into Photoshop, and let's take a look. Well, first, take a look in the layers panel. Notice all the icons at the bottom, they're grayed out. That's because you can't use layers when you have this kind of a file. If I come up here and try to apply a filter, none of them are available. If I try to adjust the image, many of the adjustments I'm used to using aren't available, and the ones that are will act a little odd. Well, if you wanna get all those things to work, then you have to go to the image menu. Choose mode, and notice we're in a weird mode. Anytime you have eight bits indexed color, there you're gonna be in indexed color mode. And there's always gonna be a color table involved. Remember when we were in Save for Web, it showed you the colors. Well, we can see them again if we choose this. There they are. We can even change them. If you were to come in here and click on one, I could change this to blue. And that sign suddenly becomes blue because it simply replaced it with whatever's in here. I'm gonna click cancel though, because I wanted the sign to be the original color. If I want layers to be available, filters, and make my adjustments work normal, then I need to choose image, mode, RGB. 
RGB is what normal pictures are in. And now all of my normal adjustments are available. I can use layers. And if I try to apply a filter, they're all here. Then if I needed it to only be 16 colors when I was done using those features, I just resave it again as a PNG file or a GIF file with 16 colors, just like I originally did. Now I'm not suggesting you use GIF or ping file format for photographs. Uh, most of the time JPEG would look much better when you're saving something for the internet. But if you have a graphic like a logo and that logo has like a three dimensional ball within it, the rest of it is all text. Well, having a little dithering on that ball and reducing the number of colors on it would make it dramatically smaller and it would look a lot better than JPEG. JPEG does not look good with graphics. It is good with photographs. But so far we've used the non-exciting part of bit depth. Next time, I'm gonna show you about going from eight bits indexed color, where there's that color table involved, to something known as eight bits per channel. That means eight bits of red, eight bits of green, and eight bits of blue. Then we can head further to 16 and 32 bits. But I wanna make sure you get a general idea for what a bit is. Just remember, a bit is the smallest part of memory we can use. It's something that can be a zero or a one. If we only use one of them, we can only have solid black and solid white. If we get two of them, we double our choices to four, like four shades of gray. Then if we add another bit, we double that again to eight. And we can keep going all the way up to eight bits if we're gonna use a color table. But once you get beyond a color table, if you want more colors, suddenly you wanna get into eight bits per channel where it doesn't have a color table. That's what we'll get into next week.